And you cannot have good job if there isn't a meaningful career building opportunity. You know, what we mean by common good is actually as important to think about. You know, if you look at dystopian pasts and presents, you see societies that are segregated into detached elites and masses of people who make no meaningful contribution to how the society is organized, governed. If we go to a two-tiered society where only a small fraction of the population have meaningful opportunities and have high status, and the rest are not capable of making a similar economic and social contribution and don't have similar high status. And I think the crux of the matter is to create good jobs, because I think good jobs for a large fraction of the population, for example, for people without a college postgraduate degree, without specialized skills, I think is the most important channel via which uh, societies in the post-war era have been able to erase social hierarchy and create a common good around which people came around. And you cannot have good jobs if there isn't a meaningful career-building opportunity. And all of these actually emphasize that good jobs are more than just economic constructs. They are part of the social fabric of society. They are critical for making people feel that they are playing a useful social role in society. In the 1980s and the 1990s, companies start making more money, but they don't pay more to their workers because, you know, why should you share those rents with their work with your workers? In fact, the opposite, companies and managers become very handsomely compensated precisely when they are cutting wages and employment because they are reducing their uh, labor costs. And this went hand in hand with a very different trajectory for technology. If you look at the data, and I have done quite a bit of this with, uh, in my joint work with Pascual Restrepo, for example, you see a lot of technological change, of course, uh, in Europe and in the US in the late 1940s, 50s, 60s, early 70s. But this technological change, though it has a lot of automation in it, some jobs, machine tools, then uh, 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 <clears throat> other functions in the back offices are starting being automated as back as early as the 1950s. It is also going hand in hand with other technologies that are increasing worker productivity, creating new tasks, new opportunities, new occupations for workers. And then from the 1980s onwards, you, have, you see a sea change. There is much less of the technological changes that are uh, helpful for humans, but there's much more automation. Again, robots, AI, software are the tip of the iceberg. If I go back to my uh, simple perspective of French insurance market, we observe, I would say, a temptation of precariousness and uh, dequalification of jobs with two main causes. The first is the temptation of low-cost insurance. It's um, it, it, it has existed for decades, but it's the consequence of um, um, a, a lower um, pouvoir d'achat, a lower um, family budget. The, the second uh, cause is digitalization. Of course, it depends mostly on companies and on, on corporate choices you, 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 you have to make. Good companies can make better jobs. It's something obvious, it's something very simple, but it's something we have to be reminded of. We have a social responsibility. Uh, we have a possibility to create our own positioning through quality jobs, quality service. That's why we, what we do today through training, uh, through promoting long-term careers in company. I, I know it's not the hype, but people who are uh, faithful who stay a long time in company because you train them, you trust them, it makes a good service 